Hmm. Makes sense in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been uh, inseparable for 64 years uh, since they eloped from Michigan, from the Pigeon, Michigan, in the thumb, farm country, 500 people coming to town, get some fertilizer. Yeah, got hitched in Reno before they crossed that state line. Well, uh, they're living in their car in Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, 17. Huh? And uh, please notice the Michigan plates. Check their ID. Bust them. Take them to the police station. Because uh, my mom's mom, Grouchy Alice, she burst into flames when uh, her daughter Helen went out the window that night, yeah, and uh, called the police and uh, uh, charged uh, my dad with kidnapping her girl. Well, uh, in the police station, they're allowed their call, and uh, Helen calls uh, her parents, and uh, Fortunately, her dad answers, you know, noble, uh, very friendly, cheerful school teacher, uh, gregarious, you know, pick up any hitchhiker and insist on showing them photos of his family, nieces, nephews, cousins. It's a jovial, uh, heartful person. I'm so lucky to have uh, noble for my grandpa. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so uh, he, he, um, he says, put my daughter on the phone, please, and... Uh, he asked Helen, I have a question for you. Do you love him? And mom, like, yeah. Like he's the most handsome, wonderful, <laughs> loving. Okay, <laughs> okay no. Uh, all right, hand the phone to the police. I'm uh, instructing you to drop all charges against these kids uh, back here in Michigan. It's not a problem anymore. Let them go. <laughs> well, um, I've got to uh, encourage that to go to heaven now. Huh? I phoned the uh, Lake City Thrift store and tell them to like bring a whole you know their biggest pick truck pickup truck over don't worry about the a guard just drive through they'll let you through i'm sure and uh i do that so i can completely empty dad's room i'm trying to make his spirit realize he doesn't actually live here anymore so everything goes the queen size bed, the bedstead, his keyboard, uh, what's left over from his model airplane uh, supplies. I mean, everything. The only thing left in his room is the carpet itself. Um, and uh, I uh, buy a bottle of Southern Comfort. And a huge poster of Barack Obama. At four feet high. You know, three feet wide. Huge. Beautiful. And, uh, well, let's see. In the far corner of Dad's room, you walk in the door, and in the far corner, there are two windows right there where the uh, two of the walls come together. And at a 45 degree angle, I set the poster. And in front of the poster, I set the bottle of liquor. And this allows uh, a breeze uh, to blow in. An escape route. In here. A strategy to get out of here. Uh, this needs a little explaining. My father uh, abstained from alcohol his whole life. <laughs> Why? Because his father, Tony, my grandfather, uh, shot himself to death. He, 
he put a hole in his stomach with a handgun. And uh, well out of his mind on alcohol. Yeah. Worst of all, Tony didn't die right away. Oh, man. There's my nine-year-old dad. Reynolds at his deathbed, and Tony saying, day after day, you know, like for four or five days as he's losing you know, his life, never drink alcohol, my son. And uh, my father never did. He told me you'd have to, he'd have to be kidnapped, tied in a chair, and have his mouth forcibly open, and have somebody pour alcohol down it. So that is the only way he would ever experience alcohol. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I somehow have to make my dad realize he's really dead, <clears throat> and that this is not his room anymore. Yeah. He would never have a bottle of Southern Comfort in his room. He wouldn't even have a Heineken in there. Okay, and uh, the poster of uh, Barack Obama, well, he voted for him, but uh, he'd never have a giant poster of him in his bedroom. I mean, his art is uh, a, a thousand-piece picture puzzle put together, and then he'd kind of shellac them and frame them and hang them on the walls. This is the art decor in trailer parks in Florida. Dad... Ascend to someone like God, more appropriate, or you're going to give me a heart attack from all that food, ice cream, donuts. I'm a health freak from San Francisco. I can't take it anymore. Okay, Dad. <clears throat> Go. <clears throat> I'm meditating. I'm a master meditator. Just like meditating. Oh, Father. May you ascend to the pure realm. This doesn't do the trick. My dead dad will not leave me in peace. Yeah, he's, uh, he really needs his life partner to leave the planet, to leave Earth, to leave the density level of Earth. And, uh, mm, I desperately need happy Helen um, to help me. But she does not know her life partner. Is dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I psych myself up uh, for the big moment to explain to mom that her devoted husband has passed away. Uh, like I'm a trained nurse, you know, from Oregon. And we were coached to be frank with the dying. Yeah, don't beat around the bush. Tell it like it is. Stay in reality. Everybody can then write, relax. <sighs> so here goes. So. Mom, put your hands in my hands. Look into my eyes. Mm -hmm. Reynolds had a heart attack. Died in the hospital in Jacksonville. So he will not be visiting here anymore. Because he is dead. Without blinking, my mother whispers, oh, like an angel, uh, well, what can you do? No emotion? No nothing? That's it? <coughs> Absolutely no surprise. 
well back in the parking lot outside the uh, nursing home. I break down. We what was doing there? Mm. Mm -hmm. When a loved one dies, that's when you first realize death is so damn final. Hmm. Until a, a unexpected uh, peacefulness uh, overcomes me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Become uh, uh, as I uh, absorb the profound truth of my mother's words. Well, what can you do? Or. You know, uh, like the Beatles say, uh, let it be. Yeah, let it be. Uh, bridge over troubled waters. Slump back on the steering wheel. Begin weeping again. <sighs> Well, about three weeks have gone by since I came back to uh, attend to my dad's body and have him cremated. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get a I get a call in the trailer. I'm absolutely done that. What? 4 a.m. Uh, to hear that mom, Happy Helen, has suffered a severe cerebral hemorrhage within the Alzheimer's unit. And they helicoptered her to... Gainesville Hospital, big time, University of Florida Hospital. Uh, why am I not in the loop of any of the uh, uh, decisions being made here? I mean, literally, I'm a few blocks away. I'm the legal next of kin. And, uh, yeah, helicopters here, helicopters there. We're talking $7,000 an hour to chop, chopper my, my people around? How about leaving a few crumbs behind for the, us poor children? Disbelief. Uh, until it dawns on me that my mom is being exploited as a cash cow by the medical system. Out of control, medical nightmare, and uh, I had just recently read this ghoulish statistic that you work all your life, you've got a couple of kids, you like to help you out after you die, you've got so much money that that you've saved and that half of that money, half of your life savings is sucked up by the fucked up American Medical Association ghouls in the last 14 days of your life. They just, anybody near death, just suck the money out of them. Well, okay. I'm so frustrated. I jump in the family car, pedal to the metal down the freeway. Gainesville's an hour south. Intensive care unit. Mom can't talk anymore. She had Alzheimer's before the stroke. She say, uh-huh. Mom, are you ready to go to heaven? Uh-huh. Is that where your mother lives? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, helping mom out. I think she might need a shawl. So I uh, say, Mom, I'm going to go to your room and, and pick up a uh, shawl for you. And halfway out of the dining room, my mother says, uh, Son! Well, Mom. I will never leave you. Almost knocked me off my feet. 
Yeah. Alzheimer's, no, 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 no social filters left. It's just like the pure juice, huh? I will never leave you. So true, so powerful, so direct, so out of context, no segues. That, uh, the truth that your mother will never leave you. How powerful. Yeah. Well, the mother that would never leave me suffers from diabetes. Heart valve, uh, heart valve damage, yeah, well, yeah, she's had a previous heart attack, and now this massive cerebral hemorrhage, uh, stroke. Uh, she's in the sixth of the seventh stage of Alzheimer's, an angelic stage. <laughs> stage five, huh? <laughs> you can, you'll never stop talking. She's like, <laughs> hard on the caregiver. But, uh, yeah, um. Uh, her mouth, bottomless uh, pit of uh, teeth stubs, black teeth. Ah, I count the uh, different tubes and cores coming out of my mother. They've got one stuck here, pretty thick tube, and all these IVs, and seven. They've worked her up to seven, life-sucking. And, uh, you know what? Look, my mother has a living will, like her husband, and uh, she does not wish to die this way in this place. Mm -mm. 